Hey there, good afternoon traders. This is Trader Tim from eminimind.com doing a Monday market analysis video. And we're gonna start with the eMini S&P. And as we look at the large time frame monthly chart, uh, you can see uh, the S&P here. We've got the 2000 highs, the 2007 highs, and the retracement that I have drawn is from lows, basically the start of this rally over the last 10 years, 2009 to all time highs. And that gives us a halfway point of about 2000 in the S&P. Uh, this swing low we broke last week. I'll go to a daily chart. And that was just the prior, really the, the major swing low. You can see it on the, the weekly here. Um, that was broken. And so, you know, the logical place from a technical perspective would be to make the, the full retracement at, at 2030. Um, I don't know the exact, uh, let's see here. Go to the daily chart. Um, I don't have an exact time frame on that, but we're getting pretty close. I mean, we started with making retracement shorts like this that were, you know, couple of weeks long and then filled in just a, a few days three four days and then we started to uh, become you know three day retracements that were filled in two days now we're getting to the point where we have a two day retracement if you will like the the anchor point is only a, occurring over two days a one day bounce and then a you know one day sell-off and so now that takes us all the way down here to the most recent one, which on the S&P is about a 2330, and it has a, a target below us at 2125. So tomorrow, uh, if I go to the intraday chart here on the ES, you know, continuing with that daily drawing, if we look for a bounce, thereabouts of 23 18 in the quarter is where it comes out to on the um the e-minis uh, looking for that to initiate potential uh a resistance level for another short and if we go to the 15 minute chart you know we just keep that drawing on here and depending on what happens in the overnight if we rip and we open up above the 618 or if we just open up and tear through the 2318 level, then you know there's no there's no trade setup. What I'm looking for is, okay, here's a potential area where we might see resistance. Then let me turn to the 512 tick chart to look for some kind of double top or some type of a break of a swing low to where I could set up in a short and enter on the 512 tick chart. So that's a level um, worth watching. I also, you know, regardless of the volatility, I'm always looking at the prior days high and low. And uh, I'm also looking at the, the halfway backs for the trading hours only. So what's been working over the last week, uh, which was actually a, a pretty great week, um, surprisingly for, for as, as high as the VIX is, you wouldn't think the market could be so technical, but um, I have adjusted my stop to three points from my usual point and a half, basically doubled my stop size and then widening my, uh, or the, the targets just end up being wider because the ranges are bigger. So I am uh, doing my best to exit at the negative 23. So if I draw up a retracement and we pull back to the 50%, I'm targeting the negative 23. And with a three point stop, I mean, it's been pretty easy to get 10 pointers, even over the course of just a couple of minutes. The key has been to enter on the 512 tick chart at 15 minute levels. So if we go to, uh, I wanted to highlight uh, Thursday it was. So on Thursday, you know, just from Here's the, the 15 minute, you can kind of see right here is the, the overnight um, line, if you will, to the left, this is all Wednesday, and then this red candle is, is Thursday's first bar. So uh, just drawing from the low of the day to highs, the, the traditional trading hours only, halfway back, uh, like we always do, 
you know, pulling back to that 50%, not putting a limit order right at 2364s, but instead coming over to the 512 tick chart and then draw, looking for that little, you know, double bottom, looking for the, the, the break of here we have lower high, lower high, lower high, and, and then boom break of a swing high with a little double bottom, draw up your retracement. Those are the kind of setups that are, um, are the most, the highest probability in this kind of environment. I mean, there's so much volume that uh, there's tons and tons of setups in the 512, but you got to narrow it down, focus on a smaller window, and I find that using the bigger time frame to give me some potential support and resistance areas. You don't know they're going to be support and resistance until you get there and you see it happen. But if you do see a pause at a larger 50%, then you can come to the 512 and place your order. So areas that I'm looking for are halfway backs for the day, uh, prior highs from the, the prior day or prior lows from the prior day. And then, um, you know, basically any point where we've made a low or a high that we could potentially see sort of a double top or a double bottom form. You know, today we had kind of both. We had a double top at highs and then right at the close, we kind of rallied and put in a double bottom. So pretty range bound today, but even in the midst of a what you would consider a range bound day, there are some trends. You have a um, little bit of an uptrend in the morning for a half hour, downtrend takes a couple hours, um, uptrend for a couple hours, and then kind of sloppy downtrend into the, the afternoon and then a pop at the close. So looking at the, at the 15 minute has been helpful to filter out some of the noise and then coming into the 512 to place my trades. Um, I did get taken out finally of the uh, BNFT short last week. Uh, monster, monster short from pretty much the start of the year up here. And then we broke uh, here on the 19th, we broke above the prior day's candles high. And that's what took it out. Uh, this guy here, it actually, it ended up gapping up. And whenever we gap up, like against the position, um, I, I put my stop above the first 15 minute candles high. And so we ended up gapping up and selling off all day. And that's why um, I didn't get taken out of the, the whole position on that, that bump right there. So no swing positions on for me, uh, just doing the um, day trades on the futures. Uh, there have been some pretty decent swings on the futures, but if you're gonna do that, you're gonna really need to use like the micro contract if you're gonna hold overnight, uh, if you're gonna try and get in some of these, you know, bigger halfway backs in the daily chart, like if you're gonna enter at 23.30 or 23.18 with a stop outside of the 61.8 and try to target the negative 23, um, you know, if you use puts, they're gonna be pretty expensive uh, if you buy, you know, the underlying stock, the SPY, that's an option, or you could use something like the uh, the micro ES. Um, puts in general, like if you're going to use puts to hedge, you kind of have to be doing them while the market's going up uh, so that you can, you know, capitalize if you're going to do like out of the money puts, buy them, you know, five or six months out and buying very out of the money so they're very cheap and volatility is low when the market is uh, pretty strong, that's really the, the opportune time uh, because you know, you're kind of losing money. This is the uh, Nassim Taleb uh, kind of approach where you kind of lose a little bit of money every single day and then you get these big uh, you know, corrections, um, maybe not quite this big on a every couple of year basis, but you're gonna get some sort of you know, bigger pullback uh, every so often, and, and that's when you can kind of capitalize on on those out of the money puts like that. But um, so it's a little bit late for 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 puts and, and that kind of thing in terms of hedging. If uh, you know if we're seeing hopefully some support down here at the 2,000 level, then uh, we're we're pretty much just about all the way there. So we certainly could go lower, but just from a 
reward to risk perspective, when I'm looking at trades, you know, you want to start with identifying the trend and identify where you are in that trend. So, you know, taking a short up here at the halfway back, you're looking at, you know, by the time you get down to this day and you're about to break lows, okay, there's still some room to go. But as you start to get, you know, down towards the negative 23, do I really want to be shorting at this point versus letting the market bounce, even if it's only a day or two, and then looking for a short on the bounce, kind of being on the um, the flip side of the panic, if you will, instead of panic buying at lows, waiting for the market to bounce a little bit, and then putting on your your position is is always the approach I've taken in terms of uh, you know that's why the whole concept with the 50% retracements uh, is viable. So um, that's what I got for you today. Stay safe out there. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing a live trading session as usual. You can check that out, eminimind.com slash VIP. Thanks everyone, and I will talk to you soon.